local marketing update is brought to you by Scott Gallagher. Scott is the co-founder of Local Marketing Source and has become the recognized expert in providing online marketing services to local businesses. Follow Scott on Twitter at Scott Gallagher 5 and on Facebook.com slash Scott P. Gallagher. And there we are for our weekly local marketing industry update. Now, next week's LMS member faculty call is going to be Wednesday, April 2nd at 4 p.m. Eastern. Uh, this week, we've got a few different things to talk about. I'm going to be introducing a new topic called Barnacle SEO, and you may have read about that and uh, may have not. And, and I mean, it's nothing new. It's just yet another one of these things, just like in old school marketing when we talk about customer segmentation and we'd create... Uh, different personas and, and whatnot that's out there. It seems that the internet marketing community comes up with these concepts and puts a new label on it to call it something else that has been around. And in the case of segmentation, um, I, I always laugh at it because the internet marketing community talks about creating avatars, and it's the uh, it's the exact same thing as as marketing segmentation and creating customer personas. Um, but, uh, that's, that's essentially what particle SEO is. So we'll talk about that and clarify and, uh, get an understanding of that as well as Google has, um, talked a little bit more about the disavow tool. And if you don't know what the disavow tool is, uh, it's essentially, well, disavow is, is disavowing anything or something. And, uh, the disavow tool allows you to go and disavow links to your website. In other words, tell Google that they're no longer important please don't count them into your algorithmic calculations uh, because of maybe A, I was bad in the past and followed some SEO strategies that now hurt me. So we'll talk about that. Um, we, we've, we talked last week and mentioned that Google has a new design, a new look to it when you do a search. Most people are noticing it, some aren't. Uh, so we're gonna talk about that because now the the results are out there and what people think about it and how it's going to impact uh, both paid and organic marketers. And then finally, I want to talk about the topic of uh, reinventing ourselves as marketers. And one thing we do know, businesses are going to die if they don't reinvent themselves every five years or on average every five years. Well, careers are no different and especially in the business of internet marketing, uh, I'm going to share some of my own thoughts as to where I'm at and the platform where I've been on for the last six months to a year or so and where I'm going to be in five years. Uh, if you haven't been in the LMS member private Facebook group yet, uh, get in there and check it out. Um, Scott is, Scott's been active. I can tell that Scott's uh, uh, been very active on his agency, and I want to give him a round of applause for that. Scott, it's nice to see that you're also on the line right now. Uh, because I do want to talk about your new website um, that you've got launched, and we're, we're going to go through some of that. And it's good to see that you're doing some video work. Uh, I had just made some comments about that, and uh, I'm, I'm a little curious why you're looking for video editing software for Windows as opposed to your brand new MacBook that you uh, that you bought. I hope you didn't give that up. And this is. A Windows computer for somebody else. I'm in the same situation. I've got to get software. Um, Mike had come in and talked about Camtasia. Uh, Camtasia is screen capture software. Um, it's very powerful. It can do a lot of different things. It's got quite a few editing features in it, but it's not editing software. Uh, it, you can definitely, for, for, for the most part of the videos that we would create, you can utilize Camtasia. Um, but I opted for the more professional version and, and went with Sony Vegas. Uh, I did evaluate Adobe Premiere, but I, I felt Vegas was a was a better platform. Uh, you can do all of that. I know you had mentioned green screening. Um, most of the software these days allow you to do screen green screening. Um, when you do get into it, there's just different variables that you can move back and forth on the video to say, uh, you know, remove more of this color or remove less of this color. Um, green screening is it's it's the wrong term that we should we should be utilizing the term chroma keying um, because in theory you can have any color background it doesn't matter what color of background you have you just want as much contrasting colors as, as possible and green and blue are 
the two most contrasting colors to the clothes we wear and um, our skin colors and, and whatnot. But yeah, most of the applications do have green screening capabilities. So, but I will touch on your website uh, after we get through the weekly update and when just before we get into questions. Um, so for, for this week's update, uh, I'm, I'm introducing a new term to local marketing source uh, students called Barnacle SEO. And Barnacle SEO was, um, it's just a strategy of marketing a business on the, on the internet um, through search engine optimization. And essentially, it, it's just pulling marketing principles and marketing fundamentals. And I'm going to go over some of those. Uh, this is a term that was first introduced a couple of years ago, but it's really been discussed a lot in the last couple of weeks, it seems, on the forums. And I thought it was definitely worthy to, to bring it up. Um, just let me get to my notes here. Now, what we know, for example, is with the algorithmic updates that have transpired over the last couple of years, they are the biggest ones that have transpired, Panda being likely the biggest update in the history of Google over, over its 12-year history. And um, we've got Penguin and most recently the Hummingbird update. And each of the updates had, you know, between Panda and Penguin, for example, you had uh, brands being a really big factor. And that was driven by the corporate leader of Google. I say corporate leader, not Sergey or Larry. Uh, they, they don't have any corporate experience. I, I mean, the whole reason why Eric Schmidt came in in the first place was because Google's board of directors felt like they did. Larry and, and Sergey did not have the corporate uh, background. And um, so we see this result four years after he came to the helm. Um, but back in 2009, he was talking about how brands were, it, it's, how, it's how we differentiate. What he said is brands are how you sort out the cesspool. I, I mean, <laughs> all right, that's, that's definitely corporate talk. Uh, brands are definitely not the, as a matter of fact, when I do my grocery shopping, I try to stay away from, if the, you know, the bigger the brand, the, the more often I'm not likely to purchase that product. But nonetheless, uh, that's what Panda had driven, uh, as well as Penguin. It was like a, a one-two punch, uh, Penguin being quality of content. And so when you brought the update of Panda together and the update for, for, for brand recognition and the update of Penguin for uh, content quality, we saw some interesting changes. And these are things that I've talked about in the SERPs. Uh, in the past, SERPs being search engine results page. I'm going over a couple of these acronym guys because I see three different names on here that I've never seen before. Um, students that are online, and I just don't know of of your your knowledge of when you're getting in. So I just want to make sure you're grabbing all of this. So what has happened when when both of these uh, updates came together, and what we saw in the local world? something that we talked about is directories. Now, one thing I teach about in my videos is to look at competitive awareness. When we're looking at a prospect or even a brand new client, we're trying to find, well, what competitors they have out there. Very frequently, we'd see a bunch of directories that would outrank your client's website. And whenever you see directories, it would be like, oh, Mr. Customer, Mr. Prospect. Um, when we see those things there, we know we can beat them out. Because Google really wants to send you to, to your business. They don't want to send them to another directory. And that was the case and that was the argument. Now with these last two updates in the last year, that argument tends to change a little bit. Because Google's in the business of, of organizing, I mean it's their mission statement, of organizing the world of its information. And another change that we've seen in Google recently is, for example, you can type in Blackhawks. And you can get instantaneous score of the game. 
you can put in your zip code and it will give you weather display right in the SERP. You don't need to go to another site. Then we saw where Google was starting to pull review information for local businesses and a whole variety of different information from sites like, like Yelp. Well, today Google and Yelp don't have a good relationship just like Facebook and Google don't have a good relationship. And Facebook and Yelp and Bing, they all restrict Google from crawling their sites to pull this information to display it in their search engine results page. It makes sense. It takes revenue away from the advertisers on Yelp or any of the other competing sites that, those, that are out there. So having said that, it almost feels like now that Google has subsided because in the last six months we've been seeing in several local search results where directories are outranking even the seven pack of local results. You, would, you are seeing Yelp outranking the local results. Now, the reason for this is because it's Google's mission to give their users access to the most relevant information that they are looking for. Well, let's say, for example, the Yelp directory, they're all set up in the same fashion. They all, they know exactly the information that consumers want. Let's say it's the restaurant industry, for example. They may want menus. They may want to know driving locations. They may want to know uh, their hours of operation or their phone number. And all of those pieces of information are readily available. Now take a business now take a restaurant's website. I'm sure you've been to many different restaurant, local restaurant websites that just completely suck. And you spend so much time trying to get through the information. You finally find a link that says menu, and then it's a pop-up of a PDF file that's way oversized for your screen that you're trying to scroll through and you just can't get it. And then you've got to call for delivery. You gotta go back and find back to the website away from that PDF and go and call. And it's just a lot of businesses fail on building a, a website that's truly usable for that business. I could demonstrate many different industries that, that do that. So what position is Google in? Hey, I'm about to give my users a lot better information by sending them directly to Yelp. Or... I can try and list a bunch of business websites that are pretty shitty. Well, <laughs> Google's going to lose users if Yahoo and Bing pick up on this and then they start doing that, especially in the local community. So Google subsided and we're seeing directories now outranking a lot of local results. But I'm wondering if you guys caught the key in what I'm trying to talk about there. That's what Barnacle SEO is. You may have heard it in different terminology at Local Marketing Source before, but it's understanding your users. So we'll take, we could take a chiropractic firm, for example. And I use chiropractors as, as examples frequently. I, heck, I can choose, um, I, I can demonstrate the, the example with Burger King and McDonald's. They're both in the burger business. But they cater to slightly different audiences and they've got their own unique flair have a different position on it, uh, you know, a chiropractor on a different extreme side of it, you've got wellness chiropractors and you've got pain management chiropractors. Well, they're going to go after a completely different audience. Obviously, somebody that's a wellness patient is a regular pain customer, might not and probably not insurance paid, may not, it's probably not accident related. They are health nuts. Uh, they like to go to yoga. Um, not all of them. I'm a wellness patient. I don't go to yoga. I'm not a health nut, but I eat healthy. I do try to exercise. I try to take care of myself. Where a pain management chiropractor, on the other hand, uh, may be an insurance claim, maybe somebody that has hurt themselves or somebody that's going to a chiropractor because they have a hurt back. I mean, that's one of the biggest, biggest things. Point being here, whether it be the McDonald's example or the chiropractor example, they're both the same business versus its competitors. And you can take that to even many, many sub-levels, whether, it, whether it's a wellness chiropractor that's in uh, 
you know, they deal with concussed patients. Or even further, they deal with concussed sports patients. Or they deal in sports alternative medicine. So the point being is, is when consumers are looking for specific services, whether it's restaurants, as an example, whether it's professional services that are out there, we know that people don't buy a product or a state or, or a service. They buy a state. And a state is that anticipated feeling that they're going to get from that. So if I need a plumber because I have a leak down in my, my basement, I'm enduring a great level of stress. Well, God, life would be so much better right now if I had somebody downstairs that was fixing it and had it fixed and had that water stopped and got the water out and dried it up. And I was sitting on my couch doing what I do, watching TV or whatever it may be. Well, I better find a good plumber that's going to solve this problem in the next 90 minutes so I can feel better. That's what it comes down to, right? So each business needs to understand specifically what their customers are and what their customers are looking for. In the restaurant business, they're looking for reviews, they're looking for phone numbers, they're looking for menus, and trying to make that information that much more easily accessible. When you do that, and you follow the, for example, best practices that are put out there by the particular search engines, it's those times that those are the businesses that ultimately outrank a lot of these directories. Google still does not want to send its users to competing sites like Yelp. They want to keep users on their site or not send them to other websites that are making money from advertising. These are all, remember, Facebook and Google are in the same business. They're ad agencies. Google has a lost leader search engine behind them. Facebook has a last leader social network behind them. What I mean by last leader is they get all these freaking users that use it. They invest who knows how much money in terms of employee power and resources to keep Facebook running and to keep Google search engine running. But that's, that's it. They've got to have a great service. They offer a great free service and they've got to keep making that service fresh and better but they're advertising agencies on these lost leader platforms. And when Google sends its users to competing places, well, they do that enough, people are just going to go directly to Yelp to do results, and Google will lose out on advertising revenue. So it's in their best interest to send them directly to either A, their profile pages, or B, their users' websites. And by you creating websites that are in the best interest of the user, for example, I just had a meeting today with one of my clients that uh, is a cab company here in Chicago. And I made a simple little comment like, well, you know, one thing that's important if you're ordering a cab, and I know when I've ordered a cab before, you know, I want to be able, I don't want to have to dig through a website to find out how to order it, even if they have online ordering available. So let's put the online ordering right on the front page. You go, exactly. <laughs> you know, I mean, like it was an epiphany to him. To me, it was just, well, we're trying to give the users the, the best experience. It's not brain surgery or rocket science. You know, it's, um, it's, it's quite simple. And this whole concept of barnacle SEO is... You know, you may have seen on Facebook, oh, God, I forget what the uh, the mathematical style is, but how they're trying to teach kids to do additions and subtractions. It's the most bizarre, half-assed, backwards way that just ultimately is confusing the heck out of these kids. And I look at this with my son and, you know, I, I mean, I won... I won math degrees in, in the province of, of Ontario. I competed. I represented my high school. Um in, in my early years of high school, I, I know a few things about math. My son's in third grade and I'm reading this stuff and reading the instructions and I can't figure it out. Um, and now we're seeing stuff on Facebook about it. It's hilarious. Well, 
that's what our damn industry, excuse my language, our industry is doing uh, by labeling certain strategies like Barnacle SEO and utilizing avatars for customer segmentation. This is all basic marketing. Provide the users with what they want. And so when you come across the, you know, I've read a few things on it. Um, you know, what is Barnacle SEO and, and how to go about to do it and how it's, you know, the term Barnacle is really starting to make a comeback. Uh, it's not making a comeback. It's just somebody recognized, hey, you know, three years ago, some SEO guy said, hey, in order to beat the search engines, uh, we, we got to do Barnacle SEO. Well, without the term local, uh, you know, that, that was getting high quality, high authoritative links and exposure that's out there. There's no real SEO way to create 10,000 articles and get 40,000 links. And yeah, it worked. And yeah, I tested it a lot. I tested it on my own blog a lot. That's why my own blog, I'm having to go through a lot of disavow right now. But definitely not for the long term. All right, I, I spent a lot of time on that one topic. Um, just as a recap, you, you know, when you, when you start to see directories that are outranking the uh, uh, the local pack, just know that that's opportunity, and that's opportunity because you can make a few changes on the local businesses' websites, and then what's going to happen is you're going to have blended results show up, and that's the case where you see one local result at the top, and then a few different organic results, and then more, and then a bunch of local results below it, or no local results at all. And so when you make some of these changes. Um, you know, follow the best practices of all of your profiles that are out there. Keep the consistencies of your NAP, you know, everything that you would do on uh, creating, you know, your citation strategies. Uh, your website is, is key, you know, follow, follow usability studies. Um, we've got, you know, I did a webinar on, on website usability not that long ago. Um, make sure you check that out and how to build a, uh, an effective website to understand effectively understand your audience and drive them to the areas to achieve that call to action as well as your plan B call to action and then um, exposure getting exposure that's out there you know there, I, I am gonna say this this is I, I don't like to talk about gray hat strategies anybody that knows the difference between white hat black hat you know the term gray hat has been used quite a bit um, but it's okay to drive links and exposure to the profile, such as your Google profile. And you don't have to be as concerned about what links are being driven to these profile sites. Um, but make sure that your website is clearly marked on several times, if possible, on those profiles. You want your website or your client's website to be the most authoritative source. Yes, Yelp can deliver great information to its users, but each business is unique. And Yelp doesn't facilitate that ability to demonstrate how unique that business really is because they're very constrained. All the profiles look the same. They all have testimonials in the same spots. They all have the phone number in the same spots. But the call to action and the information that users are looking for are different for every business. So if you can visualize the three tiers of ranking where you've got your main website at the top, you got profiles down below on your second tier, and then your third tier is your content that's created. created. And I'd suspect that there's going to be discussion sometime this year um, that people are going to come out with reports or studies or whatnot that are going to say, uh, you know, you want 80% of your links going to your second tier profile pages and 20% of your links going to your homepage or 50-50 or a variance of that. Um, I, 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 I don't know. I'm not sure what the algorithm is, is ultimately going to come out and, and make suggestion of that, but this is something that I have been putting a lot of thought into 
And when I think about, well, how do you want to expose certain profiles? Well, where are you going to expose your Google profile? And why would you want to expose a specific profile? Again, it comes down to your following and your audience in, in the world of marketing, right? And so you would want Google users to know that you're on Google and you'd want Facebook users to know you're on Facebook. It's pretty simple, right? Well, those are areas and certain related areas that you can create different exposure. You've got different groups that are out there, um, pages, and excuse me, and whatnot. All right, I got to move on. Spent 26 minutes on one topic. Uh, Google came out, Matt Cutts, he said yesterday, if you're uploading a disavow file, and then you go and you find a bunch of other links that you want to disavow, uh, when you're uploading your second file, the make recommendation to a lot of users are deleting the first file and then uploading a second one. Um, and what that does is it creates two sets of, of emails. It tends to confuse folks and you've got the, uh, I guess there's algorithmic con con conflicts. And at the end of the day, uh, Google is choosing one of the two files. So if you upload, if you just go and upload two files, uh, the second one replaces the first one. <laughs> I know, it's bizarre. Uh, why don't they just fix that? I don't know. But for some reason, they've, they've made that claim. So I thought I'd share that with you. Uh, Google's got a new design. Um, but a week and a half old, it's fully rolled out. Everybody should see it. Just a just a note here. There's three major changes to it. Two of them uh, on on the paid side, where they've gotten rid of the yellow background, and they've put a little yellow ad that puts beside it. Now this has raised some concern. Um, there's been argument on both sides of the pendulum that. I've been reading about and people have been trying to argue and those those arguments are um, that for example ad click-through rates are gonna plummet because the ads are way too obvious now with the little yellow thing that says ad uh, but then somebody else argues you know the ads look like that they're organic listings without the yellow background shading behind it nobody will notice those tiny little minuscule icons. Well, studies have come out and shown, interestingly, um, that a whole of a whole bunch of, of people that participated and, and were questioned uh, and doing some split testing and A-B variant testing that they were exactly tied um, Exactly, right down, right down to eighty, you know, eighty-seven point two percent, both the old, the old Google score and the new Google score, in terms of demonstrating uh, organic versus local. So users, it's not affecting us. It's not, it's not really affecting anything. It's just for whatever reason, Google had those, those arguments, and and you know, hopefully that this study will shut down all of that discussion on the internet. All right, and the last thing I want to talk about before we go and take a look at uh, Scott's new site, um, reinventing ourselves. And, you know, I don't know how much I've been talking to you guys about it lately. Um, and it might be because of the last year that I went through and what, uh, you know, what how I'm, I'm, I'm re-energized and re-motivated um, for this year. And... Um, But you know, I went I went through different thoughts as to how you know I know I have to reinvent myself. I'm approaching my 10 year anniversary of being in the United States, and when I first moved here, uh, I had a web development company and just started SEO, and it was basically around 2008 2009 that 
uh, I became a local SEO expert and, and put all my eggs into just search marketing, uh, organic search marketing. And I stayed far away from paid search. And I didn't want to know anything about paid search. And now, you know, AdWords is a very uh, overly dominated, very expensive place to play ball. Well, oh, my dog's barking. I guess the male person is here. And it's nice to hear her bark. She went and had surgery yesterday. She's got, uh, she had a tumor and she had that removed and... Last night, I, I don't know if she was uh, just really, really pissed off at me or if she was emotionally wrecked from the whole process or that she was drunk on drugs. But, man, she was not not a normal dog last night. Not my puppy. She didn't want. She would never, wouldn't come to me and whatnot. And I woke up today, and she seems a lot better. So that's that's positive. Um, but yeah, I digress and I apologize just talking about reinventing myself and, you know, looking at different things. And I've been noticing a trend the last couple of years is, is terms of, well, especially with these updates, right? You know, Panda and Penguin, you know, two, up to two years ago, it was easy, really easy to rank websites. Um, I mean, I ranked for some crazy, crazy terms. I mean, I founded a business based off of ranking for major keywords like delivery company uh nationally um and you know it was through a lot of different black hat strategies where well, now that are considered black hat back then article marketing was very straightforward um but along with the difficulties along with the, the brand aspects of it along with my own corporate philosophies uh, you know, I do believe in Google that they're not going to be evil, but they are run by a board of directors, and that board of directors are, are both politicians and board of directors from other major corporations. And, um, you know, I don't have the utmost trust in it. And the fact of the matter is, is these businesses, these shareholders are, are invested into Google to make as much money as possible. Uh, so Google does have the, you know, the the monetary drive that they don't have the don't be evil approach that they did for their first decade. Uh, Facebook is really no different. You know, we start to look at Facebook pages, uh, even all the way back in November of this year, 12% uh, of your audience, uh, the people that have liked your page will see content when you pushed it out last June, it was 20%. Now, in March, I just read this this week, it's now down to 6%. And a former Facebook employee has come out and said that Facebook is moving towards getting it to 1% to 2%. What that means is, is the days of free advertising on Facebook are completely done. And it's paid advertising. Well, they've started to figure things out with their advertisements and, and know that, you know, they, they opened this up, what, what, six, six years ago or six months ago, excuse me. Um, and I've played on it. You know, I just went and I mucked around with a couple of different shiny objects to, to sell. And I was, I was profitable. Um, you know, I, I've now understood the Facebook advertising platform and I'm kind of conflicted with Facebook though, for, for local businesses. Uh, you know, they 2% of consumers say that they've searched for a local business on Facebook, but 70% of local businesses have a Facebook page, yet only 50% have a website, and 80% of consumers search search engines and go to websites for local businesses. So there's a massive disconnect there. But, you know, when we start to look back and, and open up our old marketing books again and just try to understand um, working with certain audiences is is that, you know, uh, salespeople were frequently involved in regularly communicating. Uh, yeah, I had a variety of different direct mail strategies to regularly communicate with customers and, and whatnot. And that ultimately is... You know, marketing and sales were, were separated. Well, on the Internet, they're very, very blended and very, very blurred. You don't have the marketing department and the sales department. They're, 
they're, they're very blurred again on, on the internet. But both of those require different strategies to engage with audiences. And SEO is not a means to engage with an audience. It's a, hey, if you're looking for me, this is where I am. As opposed to, hey, by the way, Scott, I thought maybe you wanted to check this out. There are two different approaches to deal with customers and, and prospects. And, you know, that's why we've incorporated social means into our our funnel and our, our SEO funnel. Now, you take a, a page, for example, um, when they say 1% to 2% are going to see that, well, I've been studying the Facebook algorithm quite a bit in the last six months and really trying to dissect what, what goes on with that and how that works. I feel like I've got a pretty good understanding has how Facebook chooses to show uh, 20 to 30% of your posts and what they're thinking inside their algorithm as to what they want you to think as, as relevant. Um, you know, something as simple as you can go and check this out yourself. Go uh, think of a friend that you haven't communicated with in a long time and you haven't seen their stream on your on their newsfeed and go and write them an email that has three sentences or more, not just a, hey, what's up? They'll reply back and then you'll start seeing their content. Well, pages work a lot of that same thing and they work a lot in terms of engagement. Now. If a user engages with your content, for example, they're more likely going to see your content and your stream and your information. In addition to that, um, when a piece of when when a user first comes to your page, they're more likely to see your content, and then in turn, as time goes on. If they're not engaging with content, they're less and less likely to, to see that particular content. So having said that, that tells us, well, you know, we want to properly engage with our audience and have our audience like certain content. Well, in the case of a chiropractor, for example, a wellness doctor, um, maybe they want to post an article on one of my favorites to talk about and throw out there in terms of alternative medicine is the research that's coming out on how homemade chicken soup, boiling bone marrow, <laughs> boiling your bone marrow is a massive help for all of these acronyms that exist, ADD and ADHD and OCD and even depression. Why? <laughs> because I don't know all the science behind it, but I just know that the chicken noodle soup clears out your gut and clears out a lot of toxins in your gut and kicks it out. There's science behind all of that. Your gut makes more serotonin than the brain does. So you don't need the medicine that's given to you. So it clears the receptacles in, in your brain to produce more serotonin. Let your gut do it. Let your body heal yourself. All right. I'm going off on a different tangent there. You know, you can hear some of my passion, but the, the fact of the matter is, is I would like that content if my chiropractor posted that. Now, if my chiropractor is posting something like, uh, you know, happy 4th of July. So? Everybody else is posting that stuff too. What about reaching out to your audience? and giving them happy birthdays and stuff like that. Boom. You wish your audience a happy birthday. Facebook tells you that it's happy birthday. As a matter of fact, using different programs out there, you can automate that process. They get a happy birthday. What are they going to do? They're going to like that post. Boom. They're engaging with your page. Boom. They're starting to see more of your content. And guess what? When they've got an engaged audience, just like how AdWords, and this is my prediction, just like how AdWords um, initially launched their 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 score scoring program, um, 
based off of content, based off of all the different landing pages and whatnot, F Facebook is, is, is ultimately also going to employ some of those strategies. There's no doubt that they are going to do, which means when that user engages in content more frequently with your content and you're paying for the advertisement, because let's face it, Facebook is an advertisement advertising agency. So when, when, when you pay for the promoted posts, guess what? Your cost per click or your cost per view is going to be less than that of those users that don't engage in content. Okay? That's the science behind it. Watch. Mark my words. Now, I don't know where I was going with that. I think I wanted to prove just that point. Um, I mean, I started to talk about reinventing ourselves here. And... I have introduced to my mastermind group that I am interested in learning more about paid search. Even though the statistics are highly skewed on Facebook in terms of usership and um, you know consumers looking for this, I believe that when done properly, you can leverage that platform to vastly increase your engagement and exposure, which are then going to help all the other social channels out there and this whole barnacle crap that's being talked about as well. You know, it could be a piece of all of that. All right, I'll be done. I'm using a lot of time here. I haven't dropped anybody. I should go check what my engagement is. I like to do that. 71% of you guys are attentive. It's not bad. Nobody's dropped. So my tangents aren't bad. Um, let's see if we've got some questions. Yeah, a lot of people are typing a few different things here. Uh, oh, Scott, you're just like me. Yeah, we'll go check out Scott's site. I'll go share my desktop here. Hang on. All right. Sometimes at Local Marketing Source, we'll do website assessments for our students. We'll turn it into a webinar and spend some time doing it, look at it. Uh, sometimes we've got things called hot seats, and the hot seats are putting students on the spot. Um, but normally with hot seats, we have permission from you guys. So I'm, I'm kind of getting a kick out of this right now because I'm putting Scott right on the spot. Uh, but I am because he posted in the group. He said, you know, I want to hear everything, guys, the good and the bad. And then so he makes a comment here right now. He says, uh, thanks. Um, his next comment is, is it needs some help? And, you know, that's why I said, Scott, that's why you're like me. You know, you undermine yourself. And, you know, I can go on quite a bit uh, as to what's really important in this business and, and what's not important. And your website is, let's face it, is to help you earn credibility to your prospects. And then I can make the argument as to, you know, do you remember what, me, four or five weeks ago in one of the calls, I showed a report about, you know, um, first off, design and the way a website looked. What, less than 30% of consumers and customers thought that that was a re relevant factor when dealing with a local business? They know you're local. Um, they know you're small. And... Your perception of a website is very, very different than theirs. So don't make judgment on what prospects ultimately are going to say. A first glance, you know, when you first look at the site, it has a Web 2.0 look and a Web 2.0 look and feel. Um, you know, the nice white space that's up over here, you have uh, you don't have just it looks like a page slapped on a white page. You're... Your website changes. It's dynamic, not static. That's the terminology I was looking for. Um, you guys see how that's changing? As opposed to the same size of page that's on. 
Um, you scroll down, you've got, you know, it's got a nice look on it here, some nice content. You got the web, to, I really like this web 2.0 look down at the bottom. So, you know, aesthetically, um, this website is great. Go and look at some of the other pages. You know, when we look at navigation of the website, you got your pretty mug right there. A handsome dude. Um, I mean, I could say something like, why don't you put a picture up there of you and your significant other? Um, let's face it, it is marketing and there is psychology behind that. You know, I love my son, but uh, my son does help me. You know, when I put him out, I just put up a picture of him and my dog and, you know, um, I don't do it for business reasons, but the whole aspect shows is, oh, you know, Scott's a dad. He must be a good guy. It's bullshit. It doesn't mean anything, but that's what people think. Oh, so-and-so is a Christian. They must be a good person. <laughs> no, you're not a good person because you're a Christian. Um you're not a bad person either, but sorry, uh, perception is reality. And, you know, that's, that's a pretty emotional perception. A family man is uh, well trusted. Um, but aesthetically, this, this website's great. You know, looking at the navigation here, you know, why are you going to, why are you going to deal with this business? You know, um, what are you going to want to get from them? You know, we've talked about certain things like that. Like, you know, what are the services that this company offers? Well, I, you know, I'd like to know a little bit about the services, testimonials. Um, I like how you branded tips as a, you know, this is your blog. I went and looked at that and, you know, this is just content that Scott's writing. You don't have a lot here. Um, but it appears to me that this is your blog by looking at the authorship and whatnot. I don't know if you've got, you know, authorship on the website, but uh, got that link there. Contact information, phone number, just some basic social channels up there. So there's a few things, you know, navigation seems to be, you know, this would be the information that they would be looking for. Um, But looking at some of this, looking at this landing page, I think that there is some opportunity for some improvement here. Now, I like that you've got testimonials. Let's go see if you've listened. And I've got these wrapped in each review. Okay, like, I bet these are nice testimonials, um, but this page sucks. For a testimonial page, um, I'd love to see client logos. Why don't you have those? I would love to see Patty's face. You know, those are big conversions. Um, why can't I just read what you know one sentence as to what Patty says is great? You know, I bet there's one sentence in here that's that's a real hot. You know. There you go. He delivers on time. You know, have a little title right here. He delivers on time, dot, dot, dot. And then, you know, Patty's face right here with their business logo. Um, maybe even he, you know, he does that with just a little bit of a paragraph and then something that says read more. So that way I don't have to scroll down and see that you've got, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six testimonials on here. Um, you know, maybe show that there's a, a way to show six testimonials right below the fold. So I don't have to scroll down. I can see it in one shot. In addition to that for testimonials. Um, oh, and I was going to take a look at your source code. Okay, it's text. Does it feel like I'm invading your privacy right now? Do you know what I'm looking for? 
Let's do it the easy way. Not found. Why aren't you using the H review markup? Neither am I, at least on one of my sites. But I thought I'd call you out on it because it is very important. Uh, as well as with testimonials, um, it would be awesome to see, you know, you can move this around, this real estate here, you can move it around a little bit to be able to get that. Um, this video, I would do testing on it, okay? Um, I've made some videos before, and this reminded me of a couple of them. It reminded me of one that I I did, and I had I had even had help with it, and I thought it was going to be a rock star of a video, and uh, my statistics really didn't show that. And I could go through this whole video, and I put myself in your shoes. I'd be like, man, I like it. I'm proud of it. Um, me personally, when I watched it, Scott, I laughed a couple of times. You know, you've got this funny looking dorky person and she screams and um, and it's good. It's good. But I, I, I would test and I would put the hypothesis out there as to uh, or the question, uh, how valuable is this video? Um, how how long do people actually watch it? Do they watch it through till the end? Um, I'd want to see some data on it before utilizing this much real estate on your page this is a lot of real estate the i mean that's where the eye goes right off the bat that's that's a good picture and i think that could be a good picture elsewhere um but i think you can completely resize this video i don't think it's as important to your consumer as you're making it out to be by utilizing that much real estate your icon uh Custom thumbnail, I'm going to assume that's a custom thumbnail, um, is great. I like that tagline. You don't have any H1 stuff up here. You know you know that stuff, but we're not here really to rank our sites. Um, I liked your branding of visibility report, uh, the way that you put it, enter your phone number, then you, you know, say check visibility. Uh, I was checking something else earlier. I put in my phone number somewhere on your site and it sent me to a big form. But nonetheless, What else? Does anybody else have some comments that you may want to put into the comment box right now? I'll be happy to read them. I'm going to go through some of the other comments here right now. Scott asks, uh, you know, what are your thoughts on using a service like Yext? Uh, first off, I encourage you, there was a discussion maybe a month ago in, in the private Facebook group. Uh, go check that out. It's a very good discussion. Um, I don't use it and I've got a variety of reasons why I don't, uh, ultimately it's, it's control. You know, I'd rather pay somebody that I can overlook to create the profiles properly and have them managed and not hold them hostage to my customers or me. Um, Jacko, you're saying you've seen an increase in CTR. I'm not sure when you said that. I was probably talking about something, but your click-through rate's higher. Got a student here calling Facebook bastards. Yeah. Uh, Jacko, you're asking about Facebook statistics. Send you a link to those Facebook statistics. Um, that was off the top of my head, dude. I know that sometimes I'm, you know, I get stuff stuck in my head. I get percentages stuck in my head. I can't cite that source. I'll be honest with you. Um, but what I can tell you is I know those numbers are accurate where 
I think the one you might be talking about is where 2% of consumers have made a decision to make a and search for local businesses off Facebook, but 70% have websites. Um, or sorry, 70% have Facebook pages, whereas only 50% of local businesses have websites and 80% of consumers utilize search to find a local business. The big disconnect, it's a statistic that I utilize quite frequently. Um, it is out there. If you do a quick Google search, uh, you will be able to find that those original sources. Um, you want to borrow somebody's kid a friend to put on your website <laughs> oh. uh, Scott's yeah okay you say you're working on authorship and of course more blog posts there's only so many hours in the day yep Tisha's saying, love the layout. Uh, yeah, you told me no H review. Um, no, dude, don't beat yourself up. You don't suck, man. <laughs> the more times you say that, the more you're going to feel it, feel it. Uh, I My son says, you know, that I'm bad. You know, he'll make a mistake. He'll be like, my bad. I'm like, no, they don't, don't say that you're bad, you know. Um, we all do that. We all think it's okay. But like I've been told many times from friends and family about myself, I do it. I'm speaking from the heart because I'm, I do make those mistakes. <laughs> I was going to say, because I am bad about that. Um, but you're way better than what you think about this. Actually, where's your opt-in report? Are you doing work on your site? Because You're missing something. Um, I'm telling you, man, people would look at this and look at, look at what you've done in the last couple of years and be thoroughly, thoroughly impressed. You know, I would go and venture and say that, you know, a majority of any student that has ever bought into local marketing source, um, I don't want to say envies your position, but admires would be admirable. It feels admirable to what you have been able to accomplish. Uh, you know, 90% of businesses fail in its first year, and you're doing awesome, man. Um, really good. You feel like your video is too, is about three minutes too long? Yep, you're about right. <laughs> Again, following statistics and people's drop-off rates, uh, anything belong, be a, well, two and a half minutes is... A long time. Let's face it. This is a five minute and 14 minute second commercial. It's not as entertaining as an infomercial. <laughs> you know, infomercials spend a lot of time keeping people captive and whatnot. Um, I'm very long worded and I do take a long time to, to say stuff and I can make a five minute video as well. But yeah, I would agree with you. Two minutes is a perfect target. Uh, that's a good question, Efren. You know, what would I have instead of the video on that page? As I had mentioned, um, I would see a testimonial. Uh, I would want some sort of visual or some sort of, of opt-in to, um, to get into my sales funnel. There's, you know, you had your, you had your visibility report there, but if I remember, let me try to reload it, see if it's back or what happened to it. Yeah. Like there's a few things I know that first off, you know, saying free report, that's one of the, that of all the things that you can give away for free, Scott, the term report has the lowest opt-in rates. So, you know, what are people going to get? Well, there's no benefit here. Remember, we've talked about features, advantages, and benefits. You're talking about a feature of what they're going to get. Get your free report on the eight pain points your business needs to address as soon as possible. Download today. Well, your feature 
is the free report. The advantage is, is that they're going to get to know their own pain points, but there's no benefit. And the benefit would be so your business could be number one on Google and you can get more customers. Or imagine more customers, imagine the, the more time you would have with more patients or, you know, visualize. You're trying to make your target audience being the decision maker to the clients that you're going after, the very important top officers. Don't worry about making a secretary happy. The decision maker, when they see your site, and you could visualize it. You could put a palm tree up there and say, this could be you while your business runs on its own with all the customers you're getting, you know, some silly thing like that. But you're missing a benefit. And the benefit's got to be, you know, big and bold, you know, if we really want to get down to details here. Um, But I think that would take up a lot of that space. You don't want to take it all up. Thanks, Scott. Appreciate that feedback from you. Okay, we've got a question from, uh, pardon me, sir, if I pronounce your name wrong, uh, Ragu. And Ragu says, uh, do we have time for another site review? He says, www.1800localsearch.com. I'm almost ready. Would you appreciate would appreciate some feedback if you can do that? That's fine. Maybe next week. Tell you what, Ragu. Uh, we'll take a quick, quick look at it. Um, I will get into greater detail next week on it. You know, Ian's saying, maybe, or would it be better to better serve to show some kind of graphic showing free analysis um, instead of report. I, I mean, that's a, that's actually a pretty good point that you've got an opportunity to capture one major call to action on this web page, And you've got a variety of different sales funnels that you've created. One of those sales funnel is being your free report. I'm going to assume Scott that you've got, a free report that they're going to get, and then quite possibly an autoresponder that follows up behind that. I would also suspect that when you sign up for a free visibility report, that's your sales channel for uh, creating an assessment. You know, you want to get them on the phone. I mean, what's your biggest objective? What's your biggest goal? Where would you rather have them? Just a report in their hands or, or on the phone with you? Well, obviously, you'd rather have them on the phone with you. Um, so, you know, the argument could be placed, well, maybe, maybe you can go for the visitability report right here and then below the fold, have your free report down here. Uh, now, now we're getting into the argument of, well, maybe that should be tested and, well, you know, we, let's face it, we don't have the time to test our own websites. The shoemaker's shoe is the one with the holes and, and whatnot. Um, You may even want to go with trying to go for the free visibility report and then just a little link at the bottom of, you know, saying or somewhere when they get to the free visibility report for free, free report. Maybe I'm all wrong. Maybe this goes right to your, oh, well, I got your thank you page without inputting any information. Yeah, it's downloading a report. You know, also on your thank you page right there, you can, you know, what works really well is uh, I would consider putting a thank you, a personalized thank you video from you. Uh, Ian's asking, you know, how important is verbiage? Um, Well, there's a lot of thoughts to that. I mean, of course it's important, 
but the question is, is, you know, how, how influential is it? Well, you know, now I can open up a discussion of copywriting and creating copywriting material. Um, you know, when we start creating copywriting material and I go and look on a page like why us, you know, let's see, you know, one, one quick thing right off the bat here that, you know, I would suggest is, you know, subtitles, you've got the about us, but you know, what are these two paragraphs about? Put a little subtitle there. What are these two? What is this paragraph about with a little subtitle? Because some people like to skim. Uh, there's different types of readers that are out there. So you'll notice sales letters and content and whatnot. Use that quite a bit. You know, those things are important. On the other hand, our ability, you know, the argument is, is our ability to influence human behavior is only represented by a factor of 7% for the words we say. You know, it's like 38% for our tonality. I want to go to the store. Or, I want to go to the store. You know, I just said two different things to you guys, two opposite things that you, you, you get from it. You know, one was I really want to go, and the other one was I really don't want to go. I was kind of being sarcastic, but my tone changed that. And, of course, there's physiology. <laughs> I got your name right, Regu. Good. <laughs> Yeah, you do have a few bugs. All right, let's go take a look at that website. Regu, I want you on the line next week, uh, live. So we're going to take a look at it. Okay, the first thing I wanted to do was to contact you to find out where you were. I want to know where you're located. And I Looks like to me that Regu is a uh, web developer that's um, aspiring to be a marketer. Yeah, I I want to spend um, I want to spend some time with you, and if you would be interested, would you be interested in a hot seat, being a student uh, for a student hot seat? It'll be uh, it'll be a webinar. dedicated solely to you, uh, your business, and your progress. Uh, via one hour long. Um, I'll ask you different questions. I'd invite you to come on the line, and if you want to do that, we, we can 
we can look at some very, you know, some very in-depth things. Um, otherwise, you know, I'd, I'd like to spend 15, 20 minutes on, on this, on the call next week, if you don't want to do that hot seat. Okay, you're saying sure. Um, yeah, I think there's a lot of opportunity for you here, Raigu. I right off the bat, um, I think this site is very visually appealing. I think you've got, I can tell, with some of the functionality right off the bat on this site, you've got some some very good skills. Um, and just based off of some quick reading and capabilities, I feel that you're you're very very capable. Um, so it's nice to see all of all of this. And there's a lot of work put into this site. But when you get off the phone with me, I'm going to put you to work again. All right, no, that's right. Regu, um, well, sounds good. Can you send me an email to Scott G at Local Marketing Source? I'm going to put it in right now, so I have your contact information. Um, you should have seen that pop up. Send me an email, and we'll make arrangements for it. We'll be looking at uh, 2 p.m. next Wednesday. We'll do the promotion for you. It's only for LMS members, so it's not going out to our public audience. Um, and the objective, I mean, my goal is if you, Scott's on the line right now. We've done this with him. Uh, you know, obviously, he's he's been a longtime member, and he trusts this community, and uh, he's been in my office and shows his website and whatnot, so. All right, send me an email and we'll get that going. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and end this call. There's no more questions. All right, cool. Well, see you guys. Well, thanks for watching the local marketing industry update. We've got these things coming out every single week. So if you liked with what you heard, just click the button right above me right here to subscribe to our channel. If you'd like to get a little bit more, right over here go check out localmarketingsource.com we've got free reports that you can grab you can even register for our free marketing course to get in and see the portal or just go ahead and follow us on some of the social channels we'll be around until next time